What's up Cloud Gamers? Welcome to the Cloud Gaming Extreme channel. So in this video we're going to be reviewing the WinMax GDP and we're going to be showcasing how well this device runs cloud gaming. So if you guys like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into it. So the WinMax GDP is the device that I've always wanted to love. The idea of a portable computer geared towards playing PC games or cloud gaming caught my interest from the start. That's why I decided to back this device in an Indiegogo campaign. However, upon getting my device, there are a lot of things that I like about this device, but there are also a lot of things that stops this device from becoming the ultimate cloud gaming portable device that I was hoping for. So let's get right into this video and look at what these things are. So let's take a look at this device, actually very sleek and it looks really good. Something I love about this device is that it has everything that you need in order to cloud game. So this device has a mouse and a keyboard and also it has a physical controller built in. It has two analog sticks, shoulder trigger buttons, D-pad and your traditional X, Y, A, B buttons. Taking a look at the screen of this device, I have to say here's where the disappointment starts for me with this device. This device is an 8 inch 1280 by 800 pixel capacity touchscreen. This device does a great job getting images to adjust properly and it truly makes games appear like you're actually playing it on the biggest screen device. I didn't think that it will work but this aspect ratio is actually good for cloud gaming platforms and services. Now my biggest frustration is that this is only limited to 720p and it truly doesn't support 1080p or higher. This is very noticeable when you're trying to play AAA titles like Death Stranding and Marvel's The Avengers and you're only limited to 720p. However, like I said, it still looks good, but I think they could have done better by putting a 1080p or even higher resolution on this device. So let's take a look at the specs of this device. Now, this is a true Windows device, which means that it runs pure Windows OS on this device. This is really awesome for this form factor. So the process is an Intel i5 processor. The graphics card is an Intel Iris Plus graphic at 940. This might sound weak, but it actually does a good job running PC games. Games like Monster Hunter, GTA 5 run pretty well if you do plan on playing those games natively on this device. It has 16 gig of RAM and it also has a 512 gig storage, which is actually a lot for this device. This device has pretty beastie specs and is definitely adequate enough to handle any cloud gaming platform the service that you throw at it. This device has a lot of ports and a chance for you to upgrade the storage with a micro SD card. Now with this device you can also connect it to your TV with an HDMI port. Now let's talk about controls. So far here's another area where this is hit or miss for me when it comes to this device. I'll be lying to you if I sat here and said I wasn't impressed that they were able to fit two analog sticks, triggers and d-pad on such a small device like this. The analog takes some time to get used to, but when you figure it out, it's not as bad. Even though I recommend people to get a grip like the analog grip that I have in this video, my issue with this device is that as small as it is, it's pretty heavy, and I found myself having to take breaks after playing games for about 30 minutes. Apart from that though, the keys felt great for typing, and the mouse pad is actually really impressive for this device. Now let's talk about battery life. So when I play games on my device, I like to crank the brightness all the way up because I feel like it makes the visuals pop out more and is definitely a more pleasant gaming experience. So I get about three and a half hours of hardcore gaming time when I play this device for a long period of time. I did test it with a lower brightness sense and I was able to get about four and a half playing time. The battery life is definitely not the strongest point of this device, but to get the job done for short bursts of gaming session, and as we know, this is great for cloud gaming. Now let's talk about how this device runs on each cloud gaming platform and services. And I do have to say, in this area, this device is a boss. This being a Windows device, the way to play Google Stadium this device is by using a Chrome browser. And having Stadium this device is a blast because you have access to the mouse and keyboard, but you also have access to a controller as well. Playing games like ESO and Stadium this device is a dream because you have the combination of both the keyboard and mouse. So text and navigating and playing is a dream for a game like ESO and Stadium using this device. GeForce Now also runs great on this device. In order to use GeForce Now, you have 
have to download the GeForce Now client app. Now after you do this, you'll be able to access GeForce Now on this device. I didn't have any issue playing GeForce Now on this device. I actually found it to be really snappy and the load times was actually really impressive. Now the benefit of playing GeForce Now on this device is the fact they have access to controller, keyboard, and mouse. So playing Shadow on this device is actually a very pleasant experience. I was able to play a game like GTA 5 and I had a good time. No hiccup, no latency, and it ran pretty well. And playing Xbox Game Pass Ultimate game streaming games, I know that's a mouthful to say, or we can just go ahead and call it xCloud games on this device, was actually really impressive because again this is an 800 pixel device and xcloud or if you want to call it game pass game streaming it's only limited to 720p so actually when the 800 display projects xcloud it actually looks incredible and runs great so i had a great experience playing xcloud or game pass game streaming on this device now let's talk about the fan noise and my goodness does this get loud and it gets hot as well. So the fan for this device gets really loud, almost feels like a plane is taken off. And I'm gonna let you guys hear what this actually sounds like. So there's actually an option in this device that actually lets you censor or limit the noise of the fan. That makes the device get hot more quickly, which also is a very unpleasant experience. So one of my favorite things about this device is the fact that I don't have to carry an additional controller. The fact that the keyboard mounts and the gaming controller is attached to this device is a thing of beauty. Would I recommend this device for cloud gaming? I would say it depends. There are many other options out there available for cloud gaming that are more cheaper. For instance, you can get a Chromebook or a cheaper laptop or even a cheaper phone and you might have a better experience using this device. But I do have to say, if you're looking for a device that does it all, that has a keyboard built into it, that has a mouse and a gaming pad attached to it, and has a decent amount of screen size and screen real estate, and supports all of the cloud gaming platform, guys, this is one of the most convenient devices that you can get for cloud gaming. But for the price, I honestly don't think or know if it's worth it for you or not. So that's all I have to say about this device, guys. Thanks for watching. Check out our other hardware reviews when it comes to cloud gaming. Check out our comparison videos if you're into that. We do cover all of the cloud gaming platforms on here. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for the support. And we will catch you guys in the next video. Till next time, fellas. Peace out.